If reports are to be believed and rumors are to be believed, Final Fantasy VII Remake Part Dose might not be the only major Final Fantasy game in development. Final Fantasy XVI sooner rather than later will happen, and at this point, it looks like it might see an announcement relatively soon. Actually, the game was supposed to have some kind of reveal back in the June event, obviously, with the world being in turmoil. I can understand why any revelations are pushed back. It was also noted Final Fantasy XVI will have some kind of PlayStation 5 exclusivity. Game was supposed to be revealed in June. Got a lot of opinions on that. As far as the PlayStation 5 and more major announcements, you guys know that State of Play is kicking off this Thursday, but that'll be focused on third-party stuff, PlayStation 4 games, some minor PlayStation 5 titles, not any major first-party announcements. Like, I don't think we're going to be seeing God of War 2 or, I don't know, Silent Hills at that event. Maybe we will. You never know. They could do something surprising. I don't think that's going to happen. However, the next PlayStation 5 announcement reveals are reportedly coming later this month. We'll take a look at that. And as far as PlayStation 5, game price points we already know 2k games nba 2k 20 because that game would not be possible to make unless they get your extra ten dollars unless they price it at 69.99 the gargantuan effort that goes into making nba 2k 20 we know it warrants a 70 dollar price point but what does that mean about every other next generation title will take two ceos suggest that not all of the publishers next gen titles will receive a price jump it doesn't expect lower demand because of it We'll talk on that in a little bit, and not to meme on the NBA 2K20 developers. I'm sure they do a hard, uh, hard work, and they work really hard on the game, and they're trying their best. The pricing is a little bit questionable. However, Final Fantasy 16, let's kick it off with that. It will have some kind of PlayStation 5 exclusivity. Look, we know FF16 is going to happen. As much as I was disappointed by FF15, I like the game's combat. However, that story was a goddamn train wreck, and I don't care if you tell me. You gotta watch the movie, man. You gotta watch that anime series. You gotta watch the prequel. You gotta buy all the DLC. At that point, come on, guys. You really think that's everything that it should take to get a cohesive story out of a video game? I think you guys are a bit out to lunch with that, and I did do all of that. I watched the anime, I watched the movie, I did uh, all the DLC, all of the content. I played through all of the Final Fantasy 15 content because I'm such an ardent Final Fantasy fan, and even at that point, the story doesn't come together that clearly, and it's definitely one of the weaker Final Fantasy stories. And nevertheless, not to get on a tangent about FF15, Final Fantasy 16 is going to have some kind of PS5 exclusivity, and Reset Era Forums member Navtara recently revealed that Final Fantasy 16 is currently in development, and that it was supposed to be revealed during the PlayStation 5 Future of Gaming event in June. The game, which is apparently closer to release than people think, will have some sort of PS5 exclusivity. Specifically noting, 16 is real. It was supposed to get announced in June's event. It's supposedly closer than most people would think, it has some kind of PS5 exclusivity. It was vague back then, but it seems to be a full-timed exclusive now, and I have no idea why they haven't announced it. Now, this user, first, he correctly revealed the future of gaming event lineup before it aired, and even talked about the Marvel's Avengers PlayStation exclusive DLC before the official announcement was made yesterday. And second, the user has been verified by the Reset Era staff member Transistor, who confirmed that uh, Navtara has knowledge of such subjects. Timed exclusivity on FF16, goddamn... This generation is going to have a lot of timed exclusives. Uh, we can already put that to bed. I know a lot of you guys in the comment section when I talk about timed exclusives, you guys say, hey, this is just a thing in gaming in general. It was always a thing in gaming, but look back in the generation of the PS4 and X1. Did you really see timed exclusive at that level of a gravitas in the sense that Rise of the Tomb Raider was a big time exclusive, FF7 Remake was a big time exclusive, few other here and there. This generation, I know Sony announced a couple out there, then I believe the Medium, and then there's that one other game, was it Deathloop? Uh, they announced two time exclusives at their event. Microsoft announced seven timed exclusives, seven timed exclusives, so timed exclusivity is gonna be a big factor this generation. I'm not a big fan of it, but hey, it seems like you guys don't really care one way or the other. A lot of you guys are on my side, whatever, you guys can make the opinion for yourself. FF16 being a timed exclusive, that's pretty huge. That would once again really solidify as PlayStation the platform to get if you are a consumer of Japanese titles. That's always kind of been the case, but I really thought that Microsoft would have tried to change that narrative this generation. I don't know if they're just of the mindset, hey, we're going to take the L in that area. Although there are other factors like them getting Yakuza 7 like a dragon as a next-gen exclusive. I believe it's going to be Series X, X1, and then uh, PS4, and the PS5 version is going to come out later. So obviously, Microsoft does have some intent on expanding their Japanese market. However, losing a game like Final Fantasy 16 as a timed exclusive, if it's a year timed exclusive, that is a significant, significant loss. And if you're trying to weigh the options, you know, a next gen exclusive Yakuza is definitely outweighed by a timed exclusive Final Fantasy 16. I don't know if that's a controversial statement. I feel like it shouldn't be. 
but that's just my two cents. I know a lot of people also have this idea in their head that the recent Final Fantasy games have been bad. I don't think that's the case at all. Final Fantasy 15 had its problems. I would overall say it was still a good game, like a 7 out of 10 game. I kind of have a higher standard for Final Fantasy games, so uh, a 7 out of 10 is a disappointment, but no way would I say it was a garbage game. It wasn't worth a playthrough. I wouldn't say that at all. There were a lot of quality elements. Final Fantasy 13 is the one that a lot of people pan. Look, I enjoyed Final Fantasy 13 a lot. I didn't enjoy 13 2 and Lightning Returns, but 13 as a game, I dug. I understand that it was super, super linear. Um, but if you go into that game not expecting a Final Fantasy game, and I know that's kind of stupid to say, but really, if you go into 13 not expecting a Final Fantasy game and just a compelling title, I think you can have fun with it. And I think it's a really enjoyable game. I beat it a couple times, in fact, and I had a great time with it. 14, of course, is an MMO, and that was really good. And 12, yeah, when it came out, it was a little bit controversial, but now 12 is looked back upon as one of the better JRPGs ever released, to be frank, and one of the better Final Fantasy games. It was a really solid title. I knew that when I played it back in those six and now it seems like everybody is on board with that sentiment. I still have a lot of hope for Final Fantasy as a franchise going forward, and FF16 is something that I would definitely be excited for, and that would be a huge coup for Sony. Again, not that surprising of a coup when you look at FF7 Remake, um, but something that I did think Microsoft would try to change up a little bit this generation in acquiring high, uh, marquee Japanese titles, or at least breaking that trend of them being exclusives or timed exclusives to the uh, PlayStation brand. All right, next PlayStation 5 announcement reportedly coming later this month, while the freshly announced State of Play happening this Thursday is going to be a little bit light on the next gen news we might hear some details about upcoming you know smaller titles and third party titles according to a new bloomberg report it suggests a new major announcement could be still scheduled for august author takashi mochizuki cites an anonymous official at playstation as the source for this rumor though it is unclear whether this announcement would be related to the biggest product detail still uh, missing the release date and the price of the console of course or if it's something else fong told bloomberg that he expects the playstation 5 to cost 400 for the discless version and 500 dollars for the version with the Ultra HD Blu-ray drive before adding. I think the core of play Sony PlayStation early adopters will snap up the first several million units quickly. I agree with that wholeheartedly. With backwards compatibility, their existing game library will work with the new console so the new machine would be usable right away. He expected over 6 million PS5 consoles uh, sold uh, globally by March of 2021. However, they just announced uh, Sony, that is, the best quarter ever for PlayStation with over $5.63 billion in revenue and $1.152 billion in profit. Look, a lot of people thought COVID era was going to impact a lot of sales and uh, metrically how they're doing. They are obviously boosted and propped up by the lockdown that is going on worldwide. I know some people are coming out of a lockdown. You guys get the idea. Just because consumer spending while you're inside, that's going to go up on services like video games, like streaming services. I know ESPN Plus is killing it. I know Netflix is killing it right now. Hulu, Disney, all of those services are killing it right now. It'll be interesting to see how that translates into a long-term picture because at the end of the day, this is ultimately going to end at some point. But man, <laughs> I think that just tells you why Sony's been running a billion sales. They're bank accounts are probably going off right now with people buying games and hey we're getting a great deal so i might have complained about it no but there's definitely some reasoning they're doing it. All right, and lastly, Take-Two CEO suggests that not all of the publishers' next-gen titles will receive a price jump, doesn't expect lower demand because of it. During an investor's call, the CEO was asked whether the price of uh, applies to all of Take-Two's upcoming next-gen titles. According to Zelnick, this won't necessarily be the case as pricing will be decided on a title-by-title -title basis. Yes, we're definitely announcing prices, uh, pricing on a title-by-title -title basis. I would just observe there hasn't been a frontline price increase in a very long time, although costs have increased significantly. But most importantly, we believe we're delivering the highest quality titles in the business and consumers are staying more engaged than ever. Games have extraordinary playability and replayability and they offer many, many hours of entertainment. We think it's a great value. It does rely on our continuing to deliver amazing experiences and that's our strategy and our goal. Also, consumer demand going down due to the higher price. He was asked about that. In terms of the price point, this is a very modest price increase. The pricing has been going down on a real dollar basis for the better part of 15 years and we're applying this price point in the case where we think the quality not only supports it, but demands it. Oh, boy, NBA, the quality demands that $10 jump. Our production costs have gone up greatly, but most importantly, the consumer experience is more robust than ever before, and I am utterly convinced that NBA 2K21 will be nothing short of extraordinary. So, I, I'm sorry, guys. So, I don't expect that there will be any concerns. All right, there was a lot of hot garbage in there. I understand game development 
has increased in price. That is very much true. I don't know if you should point to the sports games to being the, you know, standard bearer of that, but if you look at games like, you know, Ghost of Tsushima, Last of Us Part Two, the development cycle of these games has gotten exponentially longer. However, there is a fundamental flaw with what Strauss Zelnick has said game prices have remained the same. Yes, if you look at it at a fundamental level, that $59.99 price tag has remained, but go back to 15 years. That's exactly what he said. The better part of 15 years. What is different about 2020 than 2005? There's this little thing called microtransactions. Are you telling me that the game overall is still $59.99? Hell no. We're talking about these developers monetizing their games whichever way they go. Assassin's Creed Odyssey, a litany of microtransactions. You're being sold, you know, gold passes and season passes day one. Yes, a lot of these games at a baseline value are $59.99, but then when you look at it a little bit past the surface level, you're talking about season passes. You're talking about, you know, microtransactions. And I give a lot of credit to the developers that have offered us quality experiences for $59.99 and haven't asked for, you know, a litany of microtransactions. I look at a game like Monster Hunter World, and yes, they had the Iceborne DLC, but man, that was a quality and competent experience from the get-go and they offered us so much for the $60. A game like NBA 2K21 on the other hand, for this one to be on the forefront of the price increase, it just comes across a little bit laughable to me and Zelda going on the fact, oh, the games are staying at the same price or even going down in price due to the dollar value or whatever. Obviously, there's that element of, okay, you gotta factor in DLC, you gotta factor in microtransactions, don't pretend like you aren't making a significant amount of money off that and the artificial price value of a game has gone exponentially up when you do factor that in. Nevertheless, beating a horse to death at the... Uh, Beating a dead horse too much at this point. I think that's the same. Whatever, you guys get the idea. Final Fantasy 16 will have some kind of PlayStation 5 exclusivity game was supposed to be revealed in June. Next PlayStation 5 announcement reportedly coming later this month and Take-Two CEO suggests that not all of the publisher's next-gen titles will receive a price jump. Doesn't expect lower demand. And let me say, I agree with him on that latter statement. I don't expect a lower demand. If you're into NBA, you're going to buy that game anyway, so good for them. They're going to make a ton of money. I just want to make sure you guys are aware of what's going on and don't buy into the, oh, game prices have been the same all these years long oh let, let's give that as leeway for sports games to go up ten dollars when come on guys you know exactly what's going on but that's going to conclude this video sound off with all of your thoughts in the comment section down below thank you for watching and goodbye Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, make sure to hit the subscribe button, and if you're already subscribed, do us a favor and hit the bell icon. This way you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. That's the best way to keep up with all of our uploads, and we usually try to upload two videos a day. And with the bell icon hit, you'll be notified whenever we do upload a video. As always, thanks for watching.